father's been gone for a while. Your mom and dad, thank you for adopting me. I'm a journalist. I know it's a Christmas assignment, Jack. You heard of us. I need this one. Who the hell would I need? I'm the one that's stuck there. I really need to find some answers. I'm looking for information around December 1963. And what kind of records would you be looking for today? Birth records. I was told I'd be in court order, but I just can't get them. Your birth certificate gone. Somebody steal it one day and return it the next. She would have been better off never knowing that. I need to know. You think that a man can change? I hope so. Happy birthday, Jack. so quickly. God is with us. All my life I've told other people's stories. This time I'd like to make my own. Good morning, Grace Street Church. What a beautiful day it is outside today. The sun's shining out there. A little bit warm, took some of that chill out of the air. Had to still scrape some frost off the windshield this morning, but you know, it's worth it when we uh, get to come into a beautiful and wonderful day that God has prepared for us. So we had the trailer here this morning for the movie that we have coming up next weekend already. Uh, so on the uh, Wednesday, um, we start our second session of the study you are never alone by max lucato and then as we slide into saturday got a lot of great things going on here at grace street church we have the virtual orange track racing the finality of the year this will be the absolute very first time we've ever done this and we're going to stream it live uh, because of the covid situation we're very very uh concerned about people and, and having any kind of unnecessary exposure so we're going to have the people drop the cars off and then we're going to go ahead and do all the races like we normally do do all the finale for the end of the year and it's all going to be streamed live and so they'll be able to watch it then and we've got all the trophies they're already here uh, we took a look at those this morning they're, they look absolutely awesome uh, so we look forward to a really great time there and then following that up at night we're going to have that movie that we just saw the christmas child uh, which is a movie from La Max Lucado. And uh, so we're going to have that right here then on Saturday night. So the same stuff. We're still going to have our popcorn and our brownie bites and all those kind of things. So we've got all that lined up. Uh, hot dogs. So uh, Wade's going to be very happy that we'll be able to have hot dogs again in here. And then we're going to be planning out our Christmas outreach uh, meals like we did for Thanksgiving. So uh, that went over very, very well, and we're very happy to be able to do that. And then on Christmas Eve, coming up, we're going to be doing our candlelight service, and uh, we have all the candles and everything that we need in here, so uh, we won't run out of candles or anything this year. We look forward to having a planning meeting to have that done, and we'll have some more details coming on that as well as our time goes forward. So we have a lot of great things going on here at Grace Street Church. Uh, and we look forward to having you be a part of it. So it's uh, wonderful to look forward to this and, and kind of wrapping up the end of a year that's been kind of challenging and trying at times. But yet, at the same time, we've had some absolutely awesome answered prayers and things go on throughout the year here. Some very, very good opportunities that God has placed us uh, before. And so we're able to answer to those things. And so uh, God is at work no matter what is going on. So no matter how bleak the situation seems out there, we need to understand that we are never alone, that God is in it with us each and every step of the way. So as we come forward now into our call to worship this morning, uh, Pastor Terry is, has chosen Isaiah 26, 1 through 3, for our call to worship this morning. And I see we have a different one up on screen, so. Um, I'm going to roll with this. In that day, everyone in the land of Judah will be singing a song. Our city is strong. We are surrounded by the walls of God's salvation. Open the gates to all who are righteous and allow the faithful to enter. You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you. 
all whose thoughts are fixed on you. And this chapter of Isaiah, again, was written about 600 years before Christ came. And this psalm and this chapter is actually a psalm. And it's a psalm of trust and of praise and of meditation. And once more, God revealed the future to Isaiah and a future that holds peace and a Messiah that will deliver and to bring about a new Israel and a new promise of hope and love that would bring about joy to the people of God. And we can never avoid strife in the world around us, but when we fix our thoughts on God and his word, we become steady and stable. Supported by God's unchanging love and mighty power, we are not shaken by surrounding chaos, but we have to keep in mind, do we want peace? If we want peace in our lives, then it's very, very important for us to keep our thoughts fixed and focused on God and to trust in him throughout anything that comes our way. So let's go to God in prayer right now. Gracious Lord, you have blessed us with a beautiful day today. You have blessed us with people here who are both in congregation with us here in the presence inside the church here and those who are online and listening in this morning. And we praise you and thank you for each and every one of those people. And we pray a special blessing over Pastor Terry as he gives the message that you've laid upon his heart to give to us today. And Lord, you know the people that you want to hear that message today. And we ask that they would receive it. And they would take it in today. And Lord, that it would bless their lives completely and totally. And Lord, as we go through our time here together today, Lord, open our hearts and our ears to hear and accept your word and to take it into our Holy of Holies and into our hearts. And let it indwell in us with your grace and your mercy surrounding us completely and totally today. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. And now we come to the time in our service here where we're going to have the lighting of our Advent candles. And we've asked uh, a couple to come up today, Steve and Denise, to light our two candles. And so uh, I'll turn it over to them. And, and they have a reading to share with us. Today is the second Sunday in the season of Advent. In appreciation of coming Christ, each week we light another candle of our Advent wreath. So go ahead. Maybe. This morning we light the second candle, and like Mary, we wait for the Christ child. We celebrate all that God has already done, and we say, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Luke 1, 46, 47. We reflect on the wonder of the precious name of Jesus, our Savior and Prince of Peace. Today we have peace in knowing that Jesus is the God who saves Matthew 1 21 and she will have a son and you are to name him Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. Amen. Thank you, Denise and Steve. I just want you just want to run outside today, don't you? It's beautiful out. That dusting of snow last night that we were supposed to get, I think my daughter down in Muscatine got that instead. That's all right. It's a beautiful day outside today, and if you didn't see, we're looking at 50s by Wednesday. 
What a December. Well, Father God, we just thank you for this day that you have given us, for, uh, for the blessing that you have given us, uh, the celebration of peace today, Father. Father, make us strong. Give us your peace that comes through your salvation, reconciliation with you through your son, Jesus. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. The only problem with 50 degree weather is looking outside and not, other than seeing a few decorations, not realizing that it's really Christmas time because this year has absolutely flown by. But it's at this time of year that we start thinking of the, the different verses that remind us of Christmas. So the one that popped into my head as I was preparing this week was the one where the angels are proclaiming Christ's birth. And they say in Luke 2, 14, it says, Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. Makes you just pray for better days ahead, because we've, been, we've had a, a decade or two in the last year. But when I think about the state of the world today, and I'm thinking about peace and when I'm doing this. When I think about the state of the world today, different words come to mind. Some of those words are chaos. And chaos can be uh, defined as utter confusion. I think of turmoil, which is worse. It's extreme confusion or agitation and commotion. Uh, an unrest, if you will, being disturbed or uneasy. I also see our world as a bit of a mess. It's disorderly, untidy, it's offensive in some respects. It's downright unpleasant in others. I also see a world that's misinformed. Now, I'm not talking about what you're reading on, in the newspapers or re seeing on TV. I'm talking about misinformed because they don't have this word to read. And certainly disorganized. And like I mentioned before, there's no denying that 2020 has been a year. We've had wildfires out west. They're still raging. They've had wildfires down in Australia and other places as well. Um, if you're into entertainment, you probably saw that Prince Harry and his wife Meghan Markle quit the royal family, which was, it sits top of mind for me because my mother-in-law immigrated from Scotland. So I, I, I thought of that. And then, of course, the pandemic that we're dealing with, but we've already had one vaccine that's been approved for emergency use and a second one that's potentially on the way. If you follow sports, you, we saw at the beginning of the year that we lost Lakers great Kobe Bryant, his daughter Gianna, and seven others in a helicopter crash. And then after all that, in May, after push came to shove and the death of George Floyd, Amud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, amongst others, the protests were sparked. We've had a very contentious election season. We're going to leave it at that. We've even had murder hornets found in the United States. And the list goes on and on and on. How on earth can we ever find peace with everything that's going on in the world? Not the peace that the world provides for us, or the world thinks is peace. But despite all the misinformation out there, all of this stuff is really nothing new. You see, at the time of Jesus' birth, the Jews were ruled by Rome. And Rome had appointed Herod the Great to rule over the Jews, and he ruled by fear. A police state, if you will. In other words, the government, and in this case, Herod ran everything. And if you opposed him, you were no longer left alive. It wasn't prison, it was death. And here at this point in time, Herod's coming to the end of his reign. And so now Rome is looking for someone else. And they, they had like three different people that they were looking at uh, to do that. So talking about a contentious election season, they're trying to find the next Herod, the next person to keep their thumb on the Jews and keep them in order and keep them in line or what they felt was in line. And at the time, most people were poor. 
they were of the lower class and so the cities were overpopulated the people were oppressed natural resources were scarce there was a lot of sickness and disease we've got a pandemic they had sickness and disease that went unchecked and uncured because they didn't have the health care that we do and yeah they would protest and they would die Time hasn't changed anything other than sometimes it can make us complacent we can become jaded and hardened and we learn to just kind of cope with what's going on oh that happened again <laughs> but when we do that we're tucking it away we're we're filling ourselves up with darkness and what happens when you get full of something it just comes out and so that can come out like the protests that are happening and other things. People just explode. There was a, uh, an article this week of a young man on a high school football team. He was the star of the team. He made a life-altering decision this week. He was under so much pressure, not having any peace, that he exploded after being expelled from a football game down in Texas. And he raced out onto the field and he took out a referee. He was being scouted by Division I schools. He has made a life altering decision because he kept packing it away and packing it away and not having any peace until it exploded. Now, whether we keep it packed away or if it boils over, it causes us to lose hope. And there's no doubt in my mind that there's a reason why Advent and the, the, uh, the different Sundays and, and the different themes that we have are in the order that they are. Last week, Pastor Mark taught us about hope. And when we lose hope, what else do we have? We can't have that peace. We learned that there was more than one type of hope last week. We found out that there was no hope, false hope, and even the most important one, there's true hope. And that's the hope that we profess. So let us wait in joyful anticipation and hope for the coming of Christ with peace and love toward all men in our hearts. People just want things to calm down. They just want peace, they want calm. When I'm feeling like that, like I did at the beginning of the week, I'm starting to prepare for today and and there's so much in the bible about peace depending on the translation that you look at you're going to find somewhere between 263 ish and 428 ish times that peace is mentioned throughout the old and new testaments now i tend to use the new living translation and that translation it's about 350 times so it's kind of in the middle there Peace is important, but peace isn't what the world thinks it is. This is the peace that Isaiah, who peace is mentioned more in Isaiah than any other book. Just a little bit of trivia for you there. Isaiah 9, 6 and 7 says this, For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, everlasting father and prince of peace his government and its peace will never end he will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor david for all eternity the passionate commitment of the lord of heaven's armies will make this happen the prince of peace he brings us that peace jesus brings it but what kind of peace is it that he's going to bring See, the world sees peace much differently than God does. There are a couple of different pieces that we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about world peace. We're going to talk about false peace. And then we're going to talk about the peace that we get from God. So the world sees peace as free from civil disturbances, free from war, free from fighting. Basically, we see order kept by the police and the military. 
Then there's false peace. This one, as I'm thinking about this one, this one really hit hard. Because think about this, we've got a divorce rate of over 50%, even in the church. So people search for peace by ending a relationship because it's easier than working on it. We tend to run from a challenge because it's too much work trying to find peace. We cave to peer pressure because it's easier. Here's the thing, false peace is only temporary. It doesn't last. The scripture from Isaiah 9 says, his peace will never end. So anything that goes against God's word is false peace. We even have a great example of false peace. Running from their problem, right in the Bible. The whole book on it. Name was Jonah. He didn't like what God had to tell him what to do. So what did he do? He ran. And he got temporary peace until the storm started and he was on that boat. That peace was only temporary. And there were different views 2,000 years ago and, and before of the peace that the Messiah would bring. Some Jews were hoping for a Messiah that would heal them. Remember we talked about all the disease and the sickness? They just wanted healing. And then there were other Jews that were expecting a peace to be won by a warrior that would raise up and guide an army against the Romans and take their land back. So what is biblical peace? Because none of those are biblical peace. It's much more than the things that we've talked about already. It's not something that you or I can create. So let's first look at how peace is defined, because it's defined a couple of different ways. In the Old Testament, the Hebrew word for peace is shalom. And we've talked about this in the past, both Mark and I have. Peace or shalom means completeness, soundness, and welfare. So think of those words when you hear this next statement, it was used as a way to say hello and goodbye by the Jews. Shalom. They were extending God's peace to that person. Then in the New Testament, the Greek word for peace is irene. And it means unity or whole, being one. It also means peace and, and quietness and rest. An example of Irene would be after two people have had a fight and they, they settle their differences and they come back together as one, becoming friends again. So that takes us from a definition of biblical peace to what are the attributes of biblical peace? When, remember when I said there's a lot of scripture mentioned peace? Buckle in. I'm pretty sure Pastor Mark will be pasting those into the, the live feed today. So if you, those of you who are here that need to go back, don't necessarily have to write them down if you don't have anything to write with, but you can get them uh, right from the comments in the feed. Peace is a fruit of the Spirit. In Galatians 5, 22 and 23, it tells us the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace. Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. They all are one. They all wrap together. And peace brings joy, another attribute. It's joyful. Proverbs 12, 20 says, Deceit fills hearts that are plotting evil. Joy fills hearts that are planning peace. If our heart is wrong, if our heart is hard, then we're plotting. We are not seeking peace. But if our hearts are full of joy, which we will be talking about next week, Pastor Mark is, I'm sure he's already got a good start on that sermon. We're planning for peace. And here's another one. God gives us peace in times of trouble. John 16, 33. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart, because I have overcome the world. Peace 
than comes from God. So we've talked about now the attributes and what peace is and means in the, there. The next one is we're going to talk about peace with God and then we'll have peace with ourselves and peace with others. But peace with God is so important. Jesus promises us peace. If we look at John chapter 14, and just in three verses, 27, 28, and 29, Jesus promises us a peace that will come from the Holy Spirit. Listen to what Jesus says. He says, I am leaving you with a gift. I'm going to stop right there. A gift. It's a gift that is all too often left unopened. We talk about this all the time. Jesus gave us a gift. God gave us a gift. A gift of freedom. A gift of redemption. But so many leave it unopened. That gift is peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Remember what I told you. I'm going away, but I will come back to you again. And if you really love me, you would be happy that I'm going to the Father who is greater than I am. I have told you these things before they happen, so that when they do happen, you will believe. See, a moment ago, we talked about peace or shalom and how it was used to greet and say goodbye. Here, Jesus is giving us a deeper sense of what peace is. It is it's captured in his redeeming work so that we're able to have a restored relationship with God. A restored relationship. That's the, where we get our peace. And Paul talks more about this in Romans 5. In the first five verses of Romans he, uh, 5, he says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has not poured out into our hearts. Or, excuse me. Because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us goes back to what Mark was preaching about last week and teaching us about last week, that hope and that peace. I, I used to have a, oh, this is going to age me. Anybody remember AOL? When I think of AOL, I, hear, I automatically hear the, the dial tone or the dial up sound in my head. But I had a, an AOL web page. And on that web page, I had, I had a saying, and it, it was something to this effect. It said, I thank God for all the things that I've gone through in my life and the troubles that I've gone through because without those, I wouldn't know the good that God has given me. So when we let the Holy Spirit work in our lives, we get a deep and lasting peace. It's a peace that come, overcomes the wars, the wars of sin and fear and uncertainty and doubt and the others that rage within us. People who don't know God, we all deal with our stuff. We all have things in our life, but this peace can help us overcome it, help it become better. And if there is anything that is causing you to worry, then Paul gives us some excellent advice. Just flip to Philippians 4, 6 and 7. It says, don't worry about anything. Instead of pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace. Which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Now for those of you that were at group study on Wednesday night, you'll remember Pastor Mark. I, and and there, was, there was a moment of quiet, and, and he just boldly proclaimed that we need to ask God for 
what, what we need. We need to not worry about those things, but pray about those things and bring them to one another. And we had such a wonderful time of prayer every Wednesday. We have a, a four-page, currently a four-page uh, document that we are praying over people. And all throughout the week, we get new requests. And it allows us to immediately pray for someone. I mean, we had a request for someone who, who had not felt well during the week. And all of a sudden, the prayers just exploded for this person. And it wasn't just a short time later they felt better. There is power in prayer and power in praying together. And not even letting the little things by because God wants to hear about it all. And when we are at peace with God, it allows us then to see things through his eyes. It gives us what I would call a heavenly lens. Because we see things differently. But before we can do that, we have to trust in God. Easier said than done, right? But think about this, and this is from the, the Amplified uh, Version of the Bible. It's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. It says, Trust in and rely confidently on the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all ways, know and acknowledge and recognize Him, and He will make your path straight and smooth, removing obstacles that block your way. Hey, once we have peace with God and we allow him into our hearts and we allow him to work through us and we rely on his understanding, that's when we can have peace with ourselves. And because Jesus is our peace, then that means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life has gone and new life has begun. That's right from 2 Corinthians 5.17. We get to exchange our old lives for a new one. It doesn't matter about your old life. God has wiped that away. He's given you a new life, a new start. And he doesn't even care if you've got remembrances of those. I, I mentioned a pastor here a couple weeks ago that he's full of tabs and he goes by pastor inked on social media and he gets people just can't believe he's a christian god sees past that he sees past his past to who he is today and what he is doing today if we go back to verse three from our call to worship this morning that mark uh, gave us you get you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you all whose thoughts are fixed on you. Now, let's personalize that verse. Hear it like this. God will keep me in perfect peace as I trust in him. Keeping my thoughts fixed on him. By trusting in and asking him, God will guide us through this crazy maze that we call life. And so when trials of life try to tear us apart, God keeps us together through his peace. And when we get to that point, that's when we can have peace with others. And since we have peace with God and others, ourselves, then we can look to what Paul wrote to the Colossians, chapter 1, 19 and 20. He says, For God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ, and through him, God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. And then in Romans 12, 18, he says, Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. We, with the Spirit in us, become the peacemakers with our family, with our friends, with our co-workers, our neighbors, and yes, even our enemies. Now, will we always be successful as peacemakers? I'm going to say probably not. The scriptures tell us that we are to live in peace, right? Well, 
people leave that gift unopened. People don't listen to what this word has to say. If they're not willing to listen to God, there's a good chance that they're not going to listen to you either. But that's okay, because you made the attempt. You tried. You're living out your faith. You're being a peacemaker. So what does this all get us to? We've got the definition of peace from the Old and New Testament. We have the attributes. We have peace with God, ourselves, and others. Well, God sent his son to battle for our souls and for our spiritual freedom and to give us peace. He sent his son to bring us that peace, a peace that the world just doesn't understand. And I'm going to go right back to it. God offers us a free gift. And not everyone is going to accept it. It just isn't going to happen. Finding the peace that God has for us is not necessarily going to get us what we want. It's not going to get us what we want. But think of it this way. It is through God that we find peace where we are at. I shared Wednesday night with, with the group that, um, I, and this has been going on for years, I was diagnosed with obstructive sleep apnea in 1985. That's a long time ago. And I was told that it wasn't life-threatening by the insurance company, so they did nothing about it. My doctor said it was, and he tried to go to bat for me, but it, nothing ever happened. Years later, I started having health issues because of it. I'm, so I have really bad apnea. I quit breathing at night. And I've done everything I could. And I finally started the process last, at the beginning of the year, this great year that we've had, to get a potential surgery that will do this. And I was denied the initial request. I was denied my appeal. So when the results of the final appeal through a third party came, I wasn't at peace. See, it happens. We are not always at peace, but I prayed about it as I opened the envelope and was absolutely shocked at God's provision and the peace that I was shaking, but I was at peace. The appeal was granted. And it's good through the end of the year. So a week from tomorrow, I have surgery again. I'm so at peace. And God has done such a wonderful thing. He, I just have just this tiny little bit left on my out-of-pocket. And that's how it's going to cost. God has given me peace in this. So if you've got decisions in your life, whether you are looking for a new job, whether you have a, a potential move in your future, whether you are dealing with an illness or a sickness, seek God through prayer. He tells us that. That's the, some of the scripture that we already talked about this morning. He tells us these things. We can be at peace right where we're at, even if it's not where we want to be. God gives us a peace that is beyond what the world offers. I'm going to close with a verse from 2 Thessalonians, it's chapter 3, verse 16. Paul writes, Now may the Lord of peace himself give you his peace at all times and in every situation. The Lord be with you all. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, we are in a season that elicits joy and happiness. Yet many of us are struggling with so many burdens, Father. It is these burdens that are stealing our joy and our happiness. It, it's robbing us of our peace. And Father, in these dark times, Father, keep Satan from whispering in our ears and telling us that we should be afraid. That life is not worth living that we cannot have the peace that brings us joy and happiness. No, Father, 
Help us not to wonder when the pain will stop, when the illness will be healed, or when the money will come in to pay the bills. Don't let Satan's words in, Father. And if they are there, Father, remove them from us. Hear our prayers, Father. We need you. The world needs you. Help us to know the peace that you offer us, Father. Let us feel it in our hearts. Thank you for giving us your son, whom Isaiah called the wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, Prince of Peace. Help us to trust in Jesus to make us complete and to show the peace of Jesus to one another. In Jesus' precious and holy name, and all God's children said, Amen. Shalom. Thank you for that message, Pastor Terry. I think with all the things that have been going on in our will, world this year especially, we need to anchor ourselves to God and to focus on peace and on that understanding. We need to have that remembrance that we have the promises through Christ to have that peace. You know, when, when we look back in the Old Testament times, the first covenant that was created was between God and the people. And God said, if you, if you obey my covenant, if you obey my laws that I have set down for you, and if you are faithful to those laws and you are faithful to me, then I will bless you greatly. And over a thousand years passed and the, and the people struggled with that. And they struggled under the law and they couldn't, they couldn't quite get a grip on that. And they lost favor with God and they lost that peace. And then God sent his son to strike up a new covenant. We re need to remember that we are under a new covenant through Christ Jesus, the Prince of and see, that peace is not delivered through the laws of that first covenant, but it's delivered through that relationship with Christ, the Prince of Peace. And as we come into this time of remembrance today, we're reminded of that new covenant through Christ. For on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it and he said, take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. And likewise, later on, he took a cup and after he had blessed it, he said, this is the cup of the new covenant. My blood shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And each time that you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, do it in remembrance of me. We need to remember that is the new covenant in Christ. He freed us from the laws of the Old Testament. And we have faith in him. We have peace and understanding through Christ Jesus. The new covenant that brings us that peace and joy and hope. So as we come into this time of communion, I invite each and every one of you to share. And if you are online and you need uh, covenant, our communion supplies, just let us know, drop us a line. So as we share in the body and blood of Christ, the body of Christ, which is broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Thanks be to God. We come into our time in our service right now where we have our time of prayer and praise. And we've got a lot to celebrate this week. And I invite Denise to come on up and, 
and share with us at this point in time. Good morning. We do have a lot of praise this week. So uh, first of all, we'll start with Anne McDill. She uh, was uh, found without COVID, am I correct? Or didn't have any symptoms, so she was able to go back to her room. So praise God for that. And I think she's doing pretty well at this point, I hope. And um, we just thank God for her healing. And uh, little David, um, even though his surgery was um, not done correctly, he was only in intensive care for part of the week and he's out of intensive care. Um, he will, he's, in, um, he's doing better, so he will be having a second surgery sometime soon to finish the first one. But um, we thank God for his life and um, he's just been a little blessing and uh, he is healing. So thank you, Jesus, for that. And uh, praise God for Terry's good news. He's been waiting a long, long time. So what a miracle that is. And that is a patient man in prayer. So we thank Jesus for you, Terry, and, um, and for your, your word this morning. It really gave me peace in my heart. So um, anybody else that needs prayer this week? No? Okay, I wanna lift us all up in prayer this week. And, and um, I was thinking of you this morning, Terry, and in Romans 12, two, it says, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. So thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for all things this morning. We thank you for everyone that you have come to die for and save on the cross. Oh, you are a great God and worthy of praise. Your love is unconditional. And let us be thankful to you for all things. For with you, Jesus, there is hope. For your word is alive and it is true. And we have to cling to that in times of trials. So let us open your Bible and read your word and pray all types of prayers in Jesus' holy name. For you are great. Thank you, God, for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. As we prepare to end this portion of our service, our online portion, join me in this prayer from St. Francis of Assisi. Lord, Make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoning. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Shalom. We'll see you all next week.